Well, as you can see, the foam is down for underneath the slab. It's not perfect stuff and there's gonna be irregularities. So what do you do when there's a void in the foam? You fill it with more foam. Bright and early this morning, the concrete pump truck is in place and ready to go. So of course, all your best plans about being prepared for a pour are always met by the one last thing you gotta do. Right now they're putting the last bit of the uh, supports against the fence to keep the pressure of the pour from blowing out the sides of the fence. So we're just cutting uh, some more straps here for the, for the support. A little stressful first thing in the morning, getting those last details going. It's always a little bit anxious, you know, got a concrete coming, there's a certain time frame, it's all, you gotta get it all right. The first cement truck is here on time and starts to feed the hopper of the pump truck. Well, it's time to pour the cement. <laughs> or not. It appears the cement is stuck. It's clogging the tube of the boom arm. Remember, the clock is ticking on the cement. $3,000 of concrete sitting here. But welcome to the world of construction. A world where if anything can go wrong, it probably will. This truck is 90 bucks an hour. We've got two of them. The material inside's been accelerated to combat the cold. The pressure to pour is on. And they can't get the pump unclogged. So what do you do? You do what you can. You beat on it. You take it apart. Meanwhile, the second cement truck pulls up with another 10 yards. And the pump is still not working. Dan has to make an executive decision. So we found somebody nearby who had a bigger, heavier duty uh, pump. Bigger, yeah. But with size comes a whole new set of problems. Wires overhead, a power pole to one side, and on the other side, a mystery tree. Is it a fruit tree? No, it's not a fruit tree. Oh, it's okay. just so, nobody even knows what it is. It's a bizarre tree. I have to cut it out, I have to get rid of it. Serious pruning anyway. I gave it a quick haircut. Well, it's not pretty, but at least it's still alive. So you getting it all worried about time and the concrete? Absolutely, absolutely. Concrete, it's uh, it's going on us, and uh, we put an accelerant in one of them. So because uh, it's, it's a cold day, and uh, gotta get that out of there. So we gotta use this to get that off of there. All the time avoiding these and making sure we don't hit that. Using the remote box, the operator has greater control. He can move freely around the site and maneuver the boom through the obstacle course to the opposite end of the poor site. So here we are. I don't know, I'm gonna check my watch here. It's uh, three hours later. The cement flows into the pump hopper, no problem. But remember, that's the easy part. Now it has to go out through the 50-foot boom. Well, it's time to pour the cement. Here we go. Again. Or not again. This is a familiar beat. That's a better sound. Hey! Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Once it goes, it really goes. The crew directs the flow of the cement and the boom operator follows them with the articulated arm. This is called a monolithic foundation because the footing and the slab are poured all at once. Footing first.
And if there wasn't enough to do, there's this little side project, pouring the stem wall. You know, that little thing that folds up the other half of the house. It's, gonna, it's, it's already kind of setting up here, so you've got to screed the top of it or else it's extra pain in the ass when it comes time to frame it. Here comes a little more pain, Dan. The next truck just pulled up with an even older load of cement. Now, believe it or not, comes the hardest part. The slab has to be poured, screeded, and completely smooth before it gets hard, or the whole day could end in disaster. We got it in, we got it done, got it got it out of the trucks before it got too hairy. It's just after lunchtime, so we're it's pretty pretty happy. <laughs>